What's going on YouTube? Ross is brief bringing you on an update of the Waterbox 105.4. Guys, it is now September and this tank has been running since about mid-May. So we just made about three and a half months and things are going pretty good. Um, I've had some ups and downs already with the tank and I've changed some things from my original uh, plans and everything, but I'm very optimistic with what the future is going to hold for this tank. Everything is looking really good. Um, you can see the amount of coralline algae that I've already got growing on my rocks. Um, I know I did, these rocks were purple, you know, already in the very beginning, uh, but they've got a ton of, uh, you know, growth on them and everything. But all that purple that you see now is all coralline algae. Um, it just is really taken over, uh, in this tank. I've never had coralline algae grow this fast before in any of my other tanks so i'm really uh optimistic with that right here but um yeah so first things first uh, i did lose my flame angel um i don't really know why the only thing that i could think possibly is my tank did get a little warm um which i'll go into how i fix that in a minute but other than that my parameters were spot on um I keep my, my nitrates around like four. My phosphates are right at like 0 0.02, um, no ammonia. I've got one of those little ammonia checks underneath the tank and everything. Uh, so I really think uh, it might have been the temperature if anything, but did a little research from what people said and they call them a 30, 60 day, uh, 90 day fish. If they make it past, you know, the 90 days, normally you're good, but some people have said that they'll just randomly uh, die at 30, 60, 90, and it's nothing you really did. So might have been a, just a freak thing or it could have been the temperature. But what was happening is I noticed my temperature was getting a little warm. And I keep my house pretty cold, guys, but uh, no matter what, uh, the tank was just about three, four degrees above what I have it set at on my heater. It was getting, it actually, I think, got up to 81 in the tank. And what I noticed was happening was down below, um, the water, I mean, sorry, the air was not getting enough circulation and everything. And so what I recently did is I just put some fans uh, to cool the uh, down below and it seems to be working great. Uh, the tank is staying cool. Um, I even noticed a bump in my pH um, sitting at right now uh, 8.2 before I couldn't get past eight. So I think uh, having that fresh circulating air going down there and everything is really helping the tank a lot. And I'm really looking forward to see uh, what improvements come with that. But so yeah, lost the flame. Um, I have my eel right here. Uh, he's a golden dwarf moray eel. You can see him, he actually got fed today. I built him a little tunnel system. It's a PVC uh, underneath and here's the exit. What I did is I glued some rubble rock and everything to the uh, entrance of it to kind of make it look like a cave so it just goes from right there to right there but it's big enough for him he's able to fit completely in there uh, and stay hidden and he normally sticks his head out uh, of this one so he's right front and center with the tank and every now and then he'll come out and explore the tank a little bit for the most part he stays right there and I can see him and he's uh, doing really good so uh, can't complain with him let's see got the Lobo right here clams doing good uh, my green plate, Bauer Banky right there, and then my orange Fungia plate. Got this uh, toadstool, and then you got my uh, Ganapora right here. Uh, lights are going down right now, guys. I actually adjusted them a little bit so I could actually do this video. So things were starting to close up a little bit. Um, I have this uh, orange Octo frog spawn and a green one. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to keep those or not. Um, I got them on trade for some of my Zoas and everything. I decided I'm going all SPS on the rock work and everything. And so that brings me to my anemone. I'm actually probably going to be uh, getting rid of this one uh, and everything just because I can't risk uh, having an, an anemone in the tank with me wanting to go full SPS. I don't want it to uh, move. And I will say this one right here has moved a lot uh, since I've gotten it. It's basically gone around this whole thing right here. And I've actually had it split off and everything. And 
both of the splits uh, ended up becoming detached from the rock and both of them got sucked uh, onto my little anemone guard, luckily. Uh, the first one uh, got sucked up really bad. Uh, it didn't get shredded, but it was just too far gone. And then the second one, I was able to turn off the pump and it came out and saved, saved it. And I actually uh, traded another local reefer for it. So that's what's gonna happen with the anemone. But some new uh, SPSs I got. Um, just got these yesterday, so they're still uh, acclimating to the tank and everything. Uh, that's like a little Maleficent, I, I think, and then um, a Pink Lemonade, uh, Bonsai, just a few more. So, um, like I said, my goal, guys, is to really just have uh, nice SPS colonies all along uh, right here and everything. In my 25, I made the mistake of putting stuff too close, so this time I made sure I left um, a lot of room for growth and everything. Um, I'll probably end up putting um another colony like right here another one right there and everything um and then we'll probably fit another one or something like right there there just uh as much as i can fit on here and with enough uh space in between and everything so little blue uh hippo tang's doing really well um he still gets bullied by the royal grama a little bit but uh He's growing, getting bigger. I'm sure if you go back and look at my first video when I got him, he's probably small. I know for me, he's doubled in size, if not probably tripled since I've gotten him. So he's doing really good. Yellow Tang's doing good. Uh, clown and six line rest. Got the fire shrimp right there. And then I've got a cleaner shrimp. Um, I do have a uh, diamond goby that I recently just put in here. I don't think I'm gonna end up keeping him though. Um, he'll probably go back to my local fish store. I wanted him because, you know, I wanted him to clean my sand bed and everything, but he just moves way too much sand. Um, and I'm just not comfortable having him in here, especially with, uh, the corals that I have in the sand bed. You know, if I'm not here one day and he starts dumping sand on one of these plates, uh, the plates are goner. So he probably won't end up staying in here. Um, diatoms are really dying down in this tank though, um, everything is looking good, but let me show y'all, uh, underneath, uh, the tank real quick. So this is, uh, under, you can see I put one fan right there and another one right there. They're both blowing in and they push out a good amount of air and, uh, it's going really good. So uv sterilizers uh co2 media y'all have seen all this before protein skimmer so this has been uh my update guys uh if you have any questions please leave it below i uh, love hearing y'all's feedback and everything uh until next time bye